the department itself and the USPS has really been at the edge of pushing travel and transportation in America. The airmail service basically laid the route for commercial aviation. Railway contracts paid for the money so that the railroads could grow and become this transcontinental wonder that they became. They're all about getting the mail everywhere and no matter what. And for a long time that meant uh, animal power and for the most part that was horses. Pony riders started in the colonial America on the East Coast. So you went from that then to the stagecoach, the horses pulling that. Then, of course, in the far north and uh, northern U.S., we had dog sleds pulling the mail. In the south, mules are still used in the Grand Canyon. They carry the mail all the way down to the floor of the Grand Canyon to the Havasupai Indian uh, Reservation. And it's not just mail, because pretty much everything that's going down there is going you know, by mail to get down there. So you can see a mule with you know, a washing machine strapped to its side going down the Grand Canyon. It's really amazing the stuff that will they'll take down there. <coughs> Rail routes started in the 1830s. The post office department decides that they're going to start putting mail on the trains. And then in the 1860s, George Armstrong out of Chicago, who's looking at this system and thinking, you know, we could probably do better. We have all this mail that's sitting on the trains while the trains move. What if we started sorting and processing that mail? So you're actually working it and doing something with it while it's moving. And that becomes the railway mail service, which uh, ends up being you know one to two cars in each train of these guys working the mail. So they're taking it out of the bags, they're hand stamping it, they're processing it, throwing the bags out when they get to the right town if they're not stopping. And the railway mail service ends up being pretty much the core of America's mail delivery. It would have continued except by the uh, World War II era, the railroads are starting to kind of slow down and die out. So the post office department starts putting some of that mail on buses. So you put all the mail on the bus, you put the guys on the bus, they sort the mail while the bus drives, which is a really great idea, except for the poor guys who are on the bus. Because I don't know if you've stood on a moving train versus standing on a moving bus or automobile. It's very different. So the guys who are sorting the mail on the highway post office buses were all bruised up. <laughs> it was a miserable job. Arthur Summerfield, who was Postmaster General in the 50s, decided at one point to work with the Department of Defense on missile mail delivery. Concept being that we could fire a missile and direct it to wherever we want it to land, and it would carry mail. It's such an insane idea <laughs> that of course they had to do it and it was experimental service and they tried it once. It landed just fine and it uh, came to rest and they came, brought it in and inside had been these two metal containers that carried 3,000 uh, pieces of mail. Each had a letter from the Postmaster General saying, this is an exciting new way of delivering mail. But this was, you know, as much a Cold War move as anything for the Department of Defense to basically say, missiles are so common here and so controllable we can deliver mail with a missile if we want to. You know, take that, Russians. <laughs> the Mailster program was just uh, one of those failed from the very beginning, except the Postal Service would not admit to failure. There are these three-wheeled vehicles, and they're only a couple inches off the ground. So if it was very, very snowy, they would get stuck. If it was windy, they would fall over. If they were going around a curve more than 25 miles per hour, they would fall over. In one instance, a large dog you know, put paws up on the top, it fell over. Finally, in the mid-1960s, they admitted this is not working, the carriers hate them. Um, there's too much mail that uh, they can't carry in these anymore, so we have to upgrade. And that's when they went to the Jeep, which was actually a very perfect vehicle for the Postal Service, because it could go through anything, and it could carry a lot of mail. The Post Office Department is a bureaucracy. It has been from the very beginning, but they've done great in helping transportation services find the best they could be, as long as it also benefited the mail. But uh, they've had their quirky times as well. <laughs>